Okay, I'm going to talk about the flight simulator. It's in the games directory. It's uh, called Eagle Dive, and it's an eight-core flight simulator. <laughs> Okay, so I gained some altitude. Okay, so uh, it's done with a trying triangles. If you look at the code, let's see, it's uh, it's 975 lines of code. Uh, the first part um, makes the map, and basically what it is is uh, panels, polygon panels. Um, first, it starts with uh, it starts by making elevations uh, by um, raising up rectangles that are. Uh, it, it does it does a level of a rectangle, then it uh, shortens it, and then puts another rectangle on top, and it kind of uh, builds up mountains. And uh, when it's done making the uh, the elevations, then it um, it calculates the normal of uh, all the squares. It does it with multi-core. Uh, the initialization surprisingly takes an a significant amount of time and so that's why I do it with multi cores anyway uh, so it calculates the normal for each grid square because it's been elevated and then it tries to combine combine the uh, the normals into uh, faces faces that are uh, polygons strictly uh, rectangles so if you look uh, well, anyway, um, it has a water level that it uh, chops everything off, um, and uh, it has it has a level for making uh, um, snow-capped mountains, and uh, this does not do uh, uh, lighting shading. This does just uh, some of my uh, some of my programs do uh, shading with lighting, but these are just fixed uh, triangles. They're actually they're quads. I don't know. Do you call them quads? Anyway, uh, and they have a certain so it makes a four-sided polygon with a certain color based on elevation. So once it gets all that done, then uh, then it flies around. So once it makes the map. Um, so to make to make the map, it uses multi cores. Or to, to to when you're flying around, it uses multi cores. This little diagram here is trying to show how it works. Basically, uh, we don't use a, G, a GPU. We use the multi core CPUs. So we have eight CPUs um, drawing the triangles that you see. And basically, I broke the screen into strips, and um, front to back. Um, are different strips. I try to uh, do them odd and even to keep. If if two if two uh, cores access the same location, there's no lock. I don't use the lock, and so it would technically it would make a glitch on the screen if two cores updated the same. I manage to keep them out of each other's way. Anyway, so each so. Uh, so I have each core doing a strip, and I have them synchronized to the uh, screen updates. Um, if you want to see, uh, so the master is the uh, bootstrap processor, and uh, it, uh, 
what it does is every every update it uh, every update it draws uh, there it's drawing the fishes okay so uh, Okay, it's checking if you've crashed, if you've gone below the, uh, if you've gone below the ele the, um, the map elevation, and you're not in water. If you're in water, you can go deep, but if you're not in water and you go deep, you crash. So uh, it it calls um, each core does a strip, including core zero, which is the bootstrap core. This is where the bootstrap core is doing its its strip. The bootstrap core has a, a bigger load than any of the other cores. Um, so where do we wait for the cores? We have to synchronize with the cores. Um, we also have to draw the horizon. Okay, I draw the horizon. So I, if I fill the whole screen with a, a horizon line, that's kind of tricky to calculate, but I figured it out. And I have a depth buffer. And um, so I start the other cores running with uh, by setting this flag. They're waiting for this flag. And then I draw my own. Okay, then right here is where uh, I wait for sync to synchronize. And then when we're all done, uh, we draw the uh, we draw the fish with core zero. We draw the text that's on the screen with core zero. So core zero has a bigger load, so it's the lim it's the bottleneck. But I think I make the cores dynamic so that they do a strip size. They go right to left as far as they can during the time they have. I think I make that dynamic. Okay, there's where I'm drawing the horizon. That was tricky. So here's uh, each strip. Uh, where's the strips? So these are all writing to a, a buffer in memory. And when, when it does the screen update, all it does, this is the callback that the window manager calls, 30 frames a second. And it, it, um, it, it just blots the uh, back buffer onto the screen 30 times a second. I try to stay synchronized. Um, we wait for the window manager. Anyway, so, uh, so here's where each core, including core zero, um, draws their polygons um, so it, it sets up the uh, the projection trend matrix it uh, once it gets the projection figured out uh, then it it go it it calculates where its strip starts and stops and then it goes through its strip it's a two-dimensional strip and um, underneath is a is a, a bunch of bins that form a grid, and those are the uh, there's a linked list of panels. You can basically what I did is uh, I I put I put each each polygon I put into a bin, and then when I'm doing a strip, I just uh, I just go through all the bins and I mark it drawn if if it hasn't been drawn, and I draw it. So I fill the polygon. I did a little trick here. Um, so when you call fill polygon, it returns a count of how many pixels. And what I decided was uh, when you're running, if you look in the distance, look in the distance. So those those poly those polygons in the distance are only one or two pixels. So what I did is I tried to uh, I I just ignore them. Um, I have a formula for uh, if it's one or two pixels, then I don't update it every time. I try to uh, I don't know I tried to get clever. In theory, it doesn't change as often, but in this program, it it does. A lot of games don't draw the background so often. Anyway, uh, actually that logic doesn't make sense because I draw the whole screen. Anyway, I decided to uh, count the pixels and then make a formula that um, made us filter out some of the tiny 
trying tri tiny polygons. I don't know if it, it, I think I measured it and it helps just a little bit, not very much. Oh well, kind of silly. So um, there's got to be a way to, uh, I'm sure you can optimize and get, I just do it by brute force. I just do, I, I have a strip and I just do all the triangles and I, I, uh, I just do it by brute force. I don't think, anyway, my goal is to have, uh, you know, a little, you know, 16, 18 year old teenagers making their own. It's not the same. I don't. I think this is different from a normal engine. Am I right? I've never looked at other engines. Anyway, uh, so the, basically what you do is you draw triangles or draw polygons. I don't think they give you that level of control. So uh, just to uh, contrast, uh, there's another program called Castle Frankenstein. This has uh, 3D meshes that are in my source code. If you can edit them, these are sprites. So you click on the mesh and then you say uh, edit 3D mesh. And uh, you can zoom and uh, rotate them. And uh, basically you, draw vert you place vertices and draw triangles. It's a real pain in the butt. So I have uh, my source code. Um, has binary data. I drew my map as a as a sprite. I drew my monsters as 3D meshes that are sprites. I drew a coffin and a potted plant. So this is uh, Castle. Uh, I can shoot him. So God said they're. Uh, God said they're dancing. I, I just had them walking, but God said they're dancing. God said they're dancing. I, th I thought that was funny. So I accidentally made a uh, Gene Wilder movie. Did you ever see, uh, what is it, Bride of Frankenstein? No. Anyway, um, so I have dancing Frankensteins. Um, anyway, that was totally unintentional. That's God puppets you. Anyway, so uh, so these are done with uh, dithering, random dithering. I have a probability that it'll be one color or another color, and it, it does a random number for each pixel, and that's how it does it. So basically, if you want it darker, you set a darker probability, and then it does random pixels. Um, anyway, so uh, this is one core. I could do multi-core, I just didn't feel like it. Anyway, um, so uh, it, I have more, uh, I have more, what would you call it, headroom? I don't know, I think we're idling 50%, uh, who knows. Anyway, um, it's, it's kind of difficult to figure out what you should do with the CPU. That's why when I make a uh, when we make an official version for version 1.0 that gets burned into Intel chips, we're gonna make it um, eight core minimum, so that um, so that we don't start with uh, we we need to start in the future, not in the past. We're we're not we're not supporting. Oh hell no, not 32 bit. Some people are crazy. They think I'm gonna do 32 bit. Oh hell no. I'm going to say minimum minimum to play is 8 cores. I think we want 8 cores, not more, not less. If you if you think about this uh this uh eagle dive, 8 cores they stay out of each other's way. But if we had 64 cores, uh I think they'd be stepping on each other's toes and there would be a lot of lost overhead. Actually GPU is embarrassingly parallel. Um, the one thing that parallel is good for is graphics. I mean, well, and, and scientific matrices. But anyway, uh, so uh, I think I'm going to say minimum eight cores, maximum eight cores. Well, no, I'm not going to say maximum. Anyway, uh, so uh, this uh, as a matter of fact, this has a sprite that uh, that keeps track of the uh, map. 
as a matter of fact it converts actually it converts it to an to a uh, internal array that's kind of I kind of cheated it's almost no nah, I don't know I, I made an array out of the sprite and then I use the array I, I have a 4x4 four four, uh, so somewhere in here it peaks the uh, here's where it makes a map by peaking the uh, the sprite it converts the sprite to a, a DC which is a device context and then it peaks it to form a map and then when it's drawing the uh, when it's drawing the map it goes through each square and checks for a line of sight and if it has a line of sight it checks the color and if it has a if it's a if it's if it's a boundary between floor and rock wall if it's a boundary then it draws a uh, a wall if it's a boundary it draws a wall so this is a uh, instead of making polygons to do the whole thing I make them up as I go from the map so if so it checks the four sides of a square to see if it needs a wall after it checks the line of sight so it, it's kind of got some glitches you can go into the wall I haven't figured out uh, anyway you, you can kind of go behind the wall oh well uh, it's kind of harder than it looks to it. Doing the little details is hard. Like doing the foreground clipping with the foreground. What I do is, uh, if I didn't draw the map solid on the floor, I would have a major problem. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I draw the bottom half of the screen floor just so that I don't have to clip. Um, I'm, not, I'm not very good at clipping triangles into the screen. I need to do that anyway so uh, that's the story